Yeah, I think he's better than that. It's just like so weird. It's just like, shh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you care? I need it now. <laughs> sweat. It's like, <laughs> the whole couch is covered. <laughs> Do you want some water? I swear someone will be here <laughs> That is forever in my mind. <laughs> For every session. <laughs>
Uh, we try really hard not to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's in a it's, business that is built on snark. <laughs> like the foundational principles of dog training are built on snark and bashing, and we do a pretty darn good job of of steering clear of that. Yeah. I'd say. I mean, it's it's. We get a little snarky with each other, but that's probably more. <laughs> that's but that's more appropriate. Yeah, that's appropriate. But also, like, I just. I think cynicism and like bashing people for like doing things that they're doing or that it's just no good. We'll yep. get a little snarky about like an, an appearance or anything like anything that's like personal that. and yeah. Yeah, we'll get snarky to each other about other people that are, to be honest, mean to us. So we might, we might do a little like we have little inside I mean, do you guys jokes have, do you or something have like that. Any idea that the, like not not just the mean but the level of mean yeah, that gets like like and and, we're, and there's we're, some and there's we'd love to take the high road and just be like you know what we're just gonna meet this with like but there's some like <laughs> feeling when people are like downright mean to us or downright like trying to like. You know, and with not just comments, but uh, I'm trainers gonna, I'm going to interrupt. And there's also the aspect of that typically when they do that, they do it in a really, like, you can tell they're out of control. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, their so punctuation and their like, grammar goes out the window. Right. And they just kind well, of, even, they're just I'm kind just of like puke on the... just talking about like a bigger picture thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that like a lot of people, when they do comment and they do take a shot, they, they don't present, they don't put their best foot forward yeah. on, on like trying to address no, a situation, no, you know, like like the the no, best that's why we talked about like but the best one and bleep this out please but the best one that i, I think i shared this with the t3 private page uh -huh. and it just said F you <laughs> yeah and i was like that's awesome in yeah. its simplicity alone it's not really creative except in the fact that it's creative because it's so simple <laughs> so um here, here was something from angela stevenson who's no longer with us Aww. um she passed on into the cornfield where all nasty snarky people go <laughs> sorry angela um we all have room to learn here's a place where behavior in the videos like you should have seen my response before I deleted it. I'm so good at like writing, getting it all out, and then deleting it. Oh yeah, it, I do right? that all the time. Oh yeah, That's yeah, yeah. That's a therapist move. Hey, I, I put a lot That's of therapists lot. through like college and yeah, bought homes for them. Right. So we all have room to learn. Here's a place where the behavior in the videos puts my teeth on edge. <gasps> I'm not familiar like? with. I'm not familiar with that, but it sounds terrible, like this. right? Stop with the man erupting, please. I really like the information you provide, oh. but either you have one host or practice some common courtesy. Oh gosh, I never thought of it as common courtesy. <laughs> Is that, do we need to have a talk? I totally missed that in school. Uh, right, the common that courtesy about, part? Well, no, but that, that speaking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> See, just so you know. We, we have a little fun. We do. We like. I'll see this stuff and I'll text it to Laura in the morning. I'll go yeah. look. <laughs> you, Sean. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. It's hilarious. Make sure we bleep that out. Um, but you know, uh, something else that I think is interesting, um, which is like, you know, one of the guys that we're both like big fans of is Gary Vaynerchuk, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so Gary's got his own Ask Gary V show. And where are you off to? making sure okay um <clears throat> and he gets a lot of crap for interrupting oh yeah yeah right right he just man interrupting except he's interrupting other men um but the thing is oftentimes and i was watching a couple of a couple episodes today oftentimes what he's interrupting is actually profound special unique insights where mm -hmm. somebody said something and it touches him and it creates an, an idea or a concept or yeah. a question that wouldn't have gotten quite that wouldn't have gotten talked about right. and honestly like in the one that i man interrupted you oh when, is that when, what was, she was, ta she was, was talking, about talking about you man interrupting yeah Oh, she's saying like, don't. I thought she's, she's sticking up for you. No, 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 oh, no, no. Really? You were talking oh, about la leash you. length, and I was like, wait one second. This is something that happens oh, oh, all so the time. Oh, so it must have been a question of the week. Yeah. 
Oh, I thought it was on the full show. I get it. it. it was, no, it was either Question of the Week or, or it was like a, a, uh, TGD Bites. Okay. One or the other. But the whole point was that you were saying something, and when you did, it reminded me of something really important. Yeah. And so, like, my point isn't to, like, steamroll you, because I always want to hear what you have oh. to say. But if you say something that, like, I think is important for them to hear, I want to make sure that I share with them. I don't want to sit here like a bump on a log and be like, I can't, inter- I can't no. man interrupt. I can't man interrupt. And, like, like I'm totally emasculated and like you know just like so anyways I didn't realize she was sticking up for me yeah she was sticking up How, do you feel better about I, it or I have a new respect for Angela uh, no, you want to take her out of the cornfield yeah. unplant her I don't need Angela Laura doesn't need any and also, sticking up yeah I mean there's other ways but I feel like our banter is what it's all about and our banter is highly respectful yeah I mean, like, when we started this show, this is getting a little long here, but when we started this show, it was basically you read the questions and I answered, yeah. right? And if you wanted to add some feedback, you could. But we consciously decided that we wanted you way more involved right. in answering the questions. And I was a big, a big part of saying, I like, I have the note that you sent me. It's in my little thing that says, or it's an email, because I come across it because it has, like, some goals and stuff. But it's yeah. like, I must have you more involved. <laughs> yeah, because I wanted I wanted you more involved in the answers. I think you yeah. have a lot of lot of value to provide. I think you have a, a good perspective, and like we always say, we we bounce each other off yeah. or bounce bounce each other out really well Absolutely. with uh, with our different perspectives. And sometimes like I'm caught on something, and then you like drive a point yeah. home in a very different way. And I'm like, oh man, that's genius, mm-hmm. you know. So hopefully, guys, the man interrupting isn't isn't perceived as me being like, you know, dismissive or anything like that because it's the last thing that it is. It's just basically she's inspired me about something and I want to make sure I get it out to you guys because I feel like it's important and that's kind of our primary objective is like share I've something seen, valuable. I've seen the question out of context if you've never seen the show before and you don't know. And your teeth start to hurt. Your teeth are on edge. <laughs> okay, so last week, weekend, we had an e-color workshop in New Orleans. It was super, super fun. Mm-hmm. Two days, jam-packed. We only had, what, five, six dogs to yep. work. Yep. So all the dogs got like major, major play. It was super fun. Yeah, major um, medical. Major medical fun. And yeah, it was it was just super fun to have everyone there in the loft and like the AC broke to start. It was such a catastrophe. Yeah. Like if everybody could have seen, if there was like a stressometer, right? So like we land Friday, mm-hmm. right? Just to give everybody some clarity on a timeline. Mm-hmm. We land Friday, workshop starts Saturday. We're like, well, typically we do it outside, yep. da, 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 da. It's hotter than Hades. Right. If the heat index is like 100 people are gonna like perish. Yep. We wanna do it inside. 2.33 in the morning, I wake up in a pool of sweat, and I come out, Laura's on the couch, and I'm like, hey, what's going on in here? And you're so like, hot. it's hotter than Hades. The air conditioner broke in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. And so I was up all night trying to find somebody to come fix it, and they finally did. They said they'd be there between 6 and 8. People were showing up at 9.45. This timeline's really fun. They were, people were showing up at 9.45. We're stressed. Where are we going to go? Outside. Inside. What are we going to do? We need to get toilet paper. We need to get water. We need to get coffee. We need to do this. And we come back from running our errands. And like I said, people show up at 9.45. We got there at like 9. And Jared's like, AC's all fixed. Literally 45 minutes before and we actually got to rock and roll and everything worked perfectly and and we had a really great time we had some people drive from really far away Mm -hmm. so dc or virginia yeah all over the place so really great stuff great workshop um even some some nola peeps or some trainers down there that were um you know uh joseph we worked with him and and uh he seems to have had a good time with it so that was really cool so yeah nola workshop was awesome and then of course i moved you Everybody, moved. anybody watching any of like my Instagram stories saw that I moved mm-hmm. from second floor, third floor. Beautiful, like mm-hmm. it's special, right? Gorgeous. Really yep. nice. And uh, what else we got? Um, Coyote and the pig. Coyote and the pig is almost out. Let's Let talk about that real week. quick. No, but it's no, like because I mean, it keeps getting closer. I got the final proof, and so that's being sent off. Everything's going to be bound, and I should have it all in a month. Mm. All the books. Holy mackerel. 500 books. Elier is like hot on your trail for I know. a copy. He, he, he emailed me. Elier, I told I him. You. I told him to. 
Oh, perfect. Because he messaged me and he was like, how do I get one of the coyote oh, in the pig books? So nice He's like, I don't want it to run out. And I was yeah. like, don't worry, she'll keep making them. No, don't I'll have, and I'll have a giveaway and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So Elia's a big fan, really cool. We just started with Cambry and her yeah. firstborn train in our like as our official nola not trainer her first born train ever but no 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 but but, but us. for us yeah, right yeah. for us so like nola is officially running yep. and with a permanent trainer there mm -hmm. shelby when we do like unshackle her will eventually get to go back <laughs> don't want her to leave. no we don't want her to leave so nola is building yeah. and this is super exciting this is a big dream Huge. realized mm -hmm. starting to come true so super exciting stuff and uh, honestly i think that's about it i want all of you guys <clears throat> really quick before I run this out make sure you guys get a copy of Coyote and the Pig when oh, it comes out so no but it's like the, anybody who is a dog fan and follows us and follows you the, the stories are so well written they're so valuable and if you have kids especially there's such in, incredible stories with profound messages that are woven into them without being heavy-handed and a lot of teaching a lot of um, kind of higher echelon teaching as far as like you know friendship loyalty self-trust risk you know putting yourself out there there's a there's a lot of really valuable components and and elements to Coyote and the Pig that are really special and it's not not just for kids like if you're an adult you want to like challenge yourself jump into those stories some pretty great yeah. stuff so it's a pretty easy read too I think like in yeah. terms of like kids when you think about kids stuff it's not like a a novel that you have to like read, read. It's like it's not like a Harry picture. Potter or thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. like that. You've got, you know, this first story to me. I know it by heart now, but it's like just setting up. And then there's three more stories right now that are coming up that are going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's kind of the plot thickens. Yeah. So, but I'm a big fan, and I wouldn't say it. I wouldn't recommend if it was crappy. I wouldn't tell you guys to go get it. I'd just be like, oh yeah, her book's out. But <laughs> anyway. I, I really, really believe in it, and Aww. I I think it's really special. And once again, the the stories, the information, and the and the teaching that's that's folded into it without it being heavy-handed or oh. pushy or you know causing you to feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like yeah, you, it's heavy-handed stuff like that. Children's stories were like here here's the moral of the story. Right. Uh, that stuff's really hard for kids and adults to buy into. But this is done in a very eloquent yeah. fashion, very special. And it's my dogs, so and it's your dogs. My dogs right. See. So so who cares? if you like the story but there's pictures of Cujo and Hercules in it right all right so this has been our first one hour intro so let's jump into some action hey everybody it's Sean from the good dog and to my left is the lovely Laura Morgan and all this stuff like I'm getting manic and weird because I'm trying to remember the intro like bear with me as I try and sort it out uh, all this stuff that you can't see even some stuff like this Dogs, Cujo, he's outside, you can't hear him whining, and uh, everything else here. It makes for the Good Dogs Q&A Saturday, episode 10. Like, tell me how this happened. Mm. Tell me how six came out. I don't know. <laughs> Just do it. I'm confused. Uh, one, oh. Place. Uh, just, I, I might need to be analyzed. I think you have been. I <laughs> I think we, we know there's learning disabilities there that get in the way that that, uh, that offer other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a trade-off. You have trade-offs. It's a trade-off. But sure. when I see 103 and I raise six fingers, just, I'm not really like sure. It's like you're I'm not really it's sure. Like you're but, <laughs> I'm not really sure where this all goes to. Anyways, so uh, any nails you want to share with the crew real quick? Same old, same old the nudes. neutral nudes with the neutral nudes with the turquoise ring. You almost had like a Dr. Evil thing. Neutral. I was gonna say neutral, but then you said nudes. So because that's what you called them on the last episode. Yeah, they're a nude shade. I want. I wanted to be like consistent. Question. Check these babies. Oh shoot. <clears throat> Hold them up further. These are the new ones that I'm obsessed with, and I'm mad that you bought them and I didn't. They're like. Oh my god! Don't take your shoes. Yeah. And like the stars. Oh my gosh. Stars come out at night. Stunning. I love them. And the other part of this that doesn't happen very often, maybe one out of a hundred episodes, a white t-shirt. Oh my gosh, that's right. Just telling you. 
and I'm wearing dark colors. Yep. That's which cool. I always do. A little contrast, yeah. Yeah, a little contrast. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Nice. Hopefully, hopefully this brings out my, 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 dark, my, my tropical tan and everything I've been working on in NOLA. Anyways, enough of this BS. Let's rock. Question number one comes from Chelsea. Chelsea says, what's the best way to correct a dog for doing something bad when I'm not home, when I don't see what happens until after the fact? My dog has separation anxiety and is destructive when I'm at work. I come at home four hours into the day for an hour, lunch, and then I'm home another four hours later. Yeah. When I come home for lunch, carpet and woodwork are destroyed. Mm. And she would break through the gates that we had at preventing her from go upstairs. We tried crating her. She destroys it, harms herself, lost teeth, loses weight quickly from panting all day. Goodness. She's now living with my parents and sister who are home most days in the week except Thursdays. I stop over on lunch on Thursdays, and although she does not destroy woodwork, she goes to the bathroom in the house. Hmm. She's potty trained. This is the only time she'll potty in the house. What's the best way to correct her for doing this when I can't immediately correct her? I do not have a video to watch her at work, and I would not be able to watch her via video at my job anyway. In the long run, I would like to live with her again, but I need to know how to correct that stuff. Separation anxiety is tough. Thanks for your great advice and tips. First thing I thought Chelsea was going to say was, "How do I get you guys to move through the intro quicker?" It just that's what that's what popped into my head, and thing. it would have been a good question. Um, it would I'd have like shaken would have shaken things up. Yeah, if you've got the answer, I'm, we're we're all ears. Um, okay, so Chelsea, I'm confused. Why isn't this dog in a crate? It breaks its teeth and does all that stuff. Okay, so there are crates that you can use that will not allow that to mm -hmm. happen, right? So they cost some dough, but you can get an impact. I think it's the high anxiety crate, and it has very, very small holes in it to where you can't really, dogs can't right. really get their teeth into it. They're virtually indestructible. And what happens with dogs that are in crates that are virtually indestructible with no give is that they typically stop trying to push against them, stop, stop trying to press oh. out, stop trying to escape. Now, I can't make any promises. Like I said, it's pricey. Um, we have one here and any of our little scoundrels that want to break out or break teeth or do anything like that, they go in that. And what we find typically is that any dog who's going to hurt itself, um, hurt a claw, hurt a tooth, something like that, typically does it on the wire crates. Yeah. They can get they can get more purchase on one of them. Mm -hmm. That's a good word, right? Good word. They can get more purchase on one of them and like kind of like pull and then hurt themselves. On these other crates that are really built for containment, there's not really a lot of space for them to get in there yeah. and like really get a hold of anything. So impact, impact, um, anx I, think it's, I think it's anxiety, the ang their special anxiety model, smaller holes, less room for the dog to get out. So like honestly, you're trying to find a way to, to correct your dog in your absence. Crating is the best way to, 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 I mean, you're talking about major damage. You're not talking about like, oh, he's barking. You're yeah. not talking about, oh, he pees in the house occasionally. You're talking about like major destruction of the house mm -hmm. everywhere. You're talking about peeing when he's, I think, at the parent's house. You're talking about all sorts of stuff like that. So for me, I would be looking to crate, and when I when I was doing that crate work, I'd have an e collar on the dog, and that would be going on like it's not easy. I get it. Like we've all got to work, and we've got a life going on. But if you got a dog and it's got problems and you need to work through it, you need to dedicate a certain amount of time to be able to work through a pro program or protocol. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying that you can't use a camera at work, you can't do whatever. Well, what about on the weekends? What about early in the morning? What about getting up earlier than you usually do? Put the dog in the crate, put the collar on, faux take off, right? You know, set it up like you're leaving. You've got the camera, drop cam, 150 bucks from the Apple store. It's on your Wi Fi on your phone. You've got your e collar. You're outside. You're watching your dog. Dog starts to like light up and get weird about stuff. You correct your dog, and your dog learns that, like, I'm not allowed to actually mm -hmm. escalate in the crate. That, that's what I would be doing. Like, there's no magic silver bullet for like, how do I correct my dog in my absence? That's like, how do I like eat cheeseburgers and not gain weight? There's, there's, there's no real good answer for that, unfortunately yet. And, and, and the reality for you, if you're trying to correct your dog in your absence, 
You can't. Mm -hmm. The only way you can do it is you have to be present or someone has to be present and either you use a camera or you hide out or you look through a window or you do whatever you're going to do or you contain your dog. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, unless there's something I'm missing here, those are the ways that you work a dog through that. And then the, the one other man interruption, man interruption, that, that I, that I want to share is that if you haven't done a full comprehensive, and I always know, like now I'm getting hip to you, like and what you what you'll say, like so now I'm like I'm I'm ready for you. Well, um, if, we'll see if <laughs> if you'll if you'll do a full comprehensive training program, and actually get the dog's state of mind into a really good space, and not just be like, cool, we got to work on the the crate, or cool, we got to work on separation anxiety, yeah. or pooping <laughs> in the house, you can make a ton of progress, mm -hmm. even a ton of progress. So, what do you have to say? I was just gonna say affection levels when you are there need to be at zero. So anytime we have separation anxiety dogs, of course we put them through their paces and get them a full program to get yep. their mind to a different space. Thank you very much. But also affection needs to be at a zero. So the fact that, you know, you on Thursdays she's not destroying your parents' house there could be possibly a different relationship going on between like your parents and sister and yeah. her and you and her, you and your dog. So what we, you know, there's a great blog post that Sean wrote called Thanks. The Drug That Is You, I think, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's about, you know, it's about affection levels and how that becomes a drug to your dog. Mm. And they're literally in a panic when you're gone. Yeah. A lot of times it's not dogs Withdrawals. being like, yeah, yeah, they're not just being like, oh, I'm going to be a jerk right now and tear this place apart. They're literally like in a panic, having a panic attack. So what you want to do is create a far less dependent dog when you are there, a far less anxious dog when mm -hmm. you are there. And that is through training and seriously zero affection. And that's not for forever, but it certainly is to create a more balanced thing between you guys. So then when you leave, it's not such a huge contrast. Yeah. And maybe you're doing that already, but just, just to make sure that you know that, um, separation anxiety is real tough. So you yeah. have to, yeah. You have to work foundation, and then you also have to work the specifics, like relationship Sean's saying, and, and relationship. Yeah, is the I mean, if you've one. got a dog that's saying, "I'm going to tear this place apart," <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Go on. We <laughs> sorry, I mean, it's just uh, it's, it's your dad's reference. Yeah. So I just we, we, when she said it, I I couldn't get away from it. <laughs> Laura will explain that at, at another date. But everything she just said was rock and roll, right on the money. Um, so, like I said. I'm, I'm talking about nuts and bolts like containment. I'm talking about correcting. Yeah. I'm talking about using tools to be able to like view your dog. And then Laura's talking about affection, which actually creates a lot of this stuff. The physical proximity stuff where the dog is too close to you all the time, allowed to be on your lap, not able to deal like the contrast of like, shit, now I can't be close to you anymore. Now I've got to like, you're going to leave. And the contrast is so big. So. It's, it's a comprehensive approach and separation anxiety is one of the more challenging things to deal with. And, and if I had to give you a checklist, I'd say a bomb proof crate that your dog can't hurt himself in, an e-collar so you can correct, I'd say a drop cam so you can watch and correct with that e-collar, I'd say a comprehensive program with like full e-collar training where, where your dog has learned place, where place is not anywhere near you. Like Laura said, I would take the affection way down, like cut it out, mm -hmm. um, soft stuff, I would like be busting your dog's butt yeah. and then leverage all of that stuff. And let me tell you, that ain't fun. That's not the fun stuff. That's all the hard work and that's yeah. the stuff that people don't wanna do. But if you wanna get over the hump of separation anxiety, that kind of kind of part and parcel of what goes along with it. Yeah. So you have to make the determination of whether you're ready to jump into all that stuff. Yeah. I know it's not fun, but that's how we get dogs to better spaces. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let us know. All right. Question number two comes from Amanda. Amanda says, hey guys, I have a big life question to ask. Yeah. I've been following Sean and Jeff's business scopes for the past two weeks, working on my mental Hopefully state. Hopefully more of mine. And daydreaming about my future business. Yep. I've played on Movie Maker and looked at web design sites. Mm -hmm. I really want to make this happen. My home life is making it really, um, though, to get... Making it really hard to get things moving though. Yeah. I work 40 plus hours, have three kids. My youngest is nine months, Oy. two personal dogs, and my oldest kid is helping me to get better and a husband. 
Um, sounds awful, right? I'm up at 3.30 a.m. and I get to bed at 9. Wow. I only have an hour after work to get a few things done before I get the kids. I want my mm. business to be based on families with small kids and busy lives, but I'm wondering now if it's even realistic. Mm. I'm trying so hard to keep my mental state in check when exhaustion and the stress of not being able to accomplish my goals set it. Mm. Hard one. Yeah, that's really hard. You want to jump in? Um, no, you start because I got to check the sound really quick. Okay. Are we good? Yeah, good one. Okay. All right, so Amanda, I feel for you. It's, 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 not, it's not easy for anybody, right? Not easy for anybody to build a business. Yeah. Um, there's so many demands on your time. Is that her bubbler? I don't know, or plumbing or something's going on. Uh, there's so many demands on your time uh, just with your business, but then you add in all of the rest of your life and you've got a really busy life. Yeah. Several kids um, getting up at 3.30 in the morning. She said she had a full-time job. Yeah, and yeah I mean, like, a week. Yeah, so like this is going to be no picnic. Now, yeah. what it really comes down to is like, if you want this bad enough, and I'm not going to give you some platitudes about like just silly, like if you want it bad enough, you can have it. Mm -hmm. It's more about if you want it bad enough, then there's some strategies that you can employ to try and help you find a way to better, better manage your time and squeeze in some moments here and there to be able to incrementally move. You may not be able to go from like where you're at now to thriving dog business in a year. Mm -hmm. Right. You may need to go, you know, or, or, you know, like some people could even do it in six, seven months. You may, you may need to go in these tiny baby steps and it may take you two or three years mm -hmm. to get there, but that doesn't mean you can't get it. It just means that like your life load is heavy duty. Yeah. And so there is time in the day and there are ways to structure your day. And we can talk about goal setting and we can talk about time management and things like that. But I'm telling you, there are moments in your day that you can start to carve out and start to find ways to start to build in infrastructure and create your business. But boy, I'm telling you, you are going to have to practice patience at the highest level mm -hmm. because you've created, the, just the reality is you've created a very busy life. Yeah. And so now you're saying, I've got a really busy life with a lot of priorities and a lot of a lot of things that are really important to me and mm -hmm. i want to add something else really important to yeah. me really profound and 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 try and find a way to fold that in and so that's just not an easy one but boy i'm telling you you can do it so real quick before laura jumps in i just wanted to share a few things right so you need to start to look at your day and find when you can block out even 15 minutes laura's so good at like blocking time mm -hmm. so like Everybody gets caught up in like, I need an hour. I need an hour to do stuff. You know what you can do in 15 minutes over the course of a week? Mm -hmm. You can make some serious progress. Like I'm working on my book right now and I spend about 15, 20 minutes a morning making progress towards getting my book content together. If I try and do it all in one day, I'm gonna lose my mind, I'm gonna get overwhelmed, I'm gonna get freaked out, I'm gonna get discouraged, yeah. I'm gonna get all that stuff. In 15 minute increments, you pick out what you want, you stay dedicated and focused, and you can make some great stuff happen mm -hmm. while still keeping the rest of your life together. So I think that's super duper important. Um, let's see what else. Uh, ba, 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 ba. You don't need to tackle it all at once, just chip away, right? So. Pick the important stuff and start chipping away, whether that's like building your website and getting your SEO together. Like mm -hmm. even before you're like even working dogs, like start building the infrastructure of your business to where when you're ready to roll and you can be selective about clients, yeah. you've already got like a website that's killing and you've got SEO that's bumping and you've got videos out and people are like, who is this lady? Mm -hmm. And then you can pick and choose and say like, I've got, I've got, you know, two hours this weekend and I'm going to fit clients in those two hours mm -hmm. and maybe that's all you've got for this this next year or two years whatever it is but that can be enough to get you going and sustain you so I think that's a, a really important way to look at it rather than like I've got to try and find a way to overhaul and like mm -hmm. fit it all in and like be doing dog training eight hours a day mm -hmm. you can work to you can work up to that like like people have done some stuff that's way harder than what you're talking about doing and way harder than anything we've talked about mm -hmm. doing so Keep it in perspective. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it's demanding. Yes, there's not a lot of time, but there are ways to go about doing that. And uh, then the last thing I would say is just like this whole kind of tortoise in the hair, you know, like it's so easy to get caught up in like watching other people that are like 
jamming through it, but like and telling you to jam through and it. telling you to jam mm -hmm. through it. But to be honest, like some people might even think that we jam through it, but we're we're way more tortoisey, way, slow. way yeah. more tortoisey. Like we're in our eighth year, and we're so selective about like how we build and who's in the family and how do we how do we start to leverage that how do we move into another city or another location mm -hmm. moving prices changing the website all that stuff just super slow super tortoisey but guess what we're unstoppable yeah. we don't stop this tortoise just keeps rolling yeah and if your tortoise keeps rolling which sounds really funny if your tortoise keeps rolling you're you you can't you can't beat somebody who never stops. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's as simple as that. You can't beat somebody that never stops. And so if you're trying to get it going and you never stop and you take it and you break it down into small, small little pieces, you can make some stuff happen. Yeah. So Laura, yeah, hit it. I think just, just to close it off. I think you exactly said what I was thinking. It's like, you're working three, you're waving up at three 30. You're going to bed at nine. Like there's no, I mean, you're clearly busy <laughs> so, like what can you do so like Sean says like I would honestly look at what I would look at a year going forward mm. I would say like at the end of a year yeah I want to be maybe having like some light business on the side doing this I think realistically that's the best way to do it because if you try to like burn out and wake up at 2.30 and go to bed at 10, you're gonna burn out real fast and yeah. you're gonna be done and you're not gonna be the mom you wanna be, you're yep. not gonna be the wife, you're yep. not gonna live the life at all. Like, what, can, can you explain a little bit about what you mean by like... A, yeah, I'm gonna, a, a, I'm, I'm gonna get into that. So if you see like, instead of saying like, cause I know how it is, you watch like inspiring stuff and you're like, oh, I gotta do this now. Everyone's telling me I gotta like, you know, just throw it all away and get like, slow your roll. Burn, burn the ships. Right? You've got a nine month old that's wow. really young. Yeah. You've got to like take time with that. And, and prioritize. And prior, exactly. So that, I, as, as I've heard over and over, motherhood changes as things go, you know, like soon, a few years, he'll be in school. That's going to be a whole different thing, right? Yeah. So right now, you need to like get off the panic train of like, if I don't do it now, I'll never get my dreams. I would say, like Sean said, I would literally pick 15 minutes a day where you're working on one thing. You set the timer, whatever you've got to do, 15 minutes a day, you set your timer, you do your 15 minutes and that's done. You have a journal that you write out that says like, in one year, I want these things accomplished and they better be, sorry to say, they better be kind of small because with your time, what you're talking about, unless you're gonna cut your hours, unless you guys are gonna to move to a smaller place so you yeah. can have a part-time job, yep. unless you're gonna cut all your expenses and do all this big stuff, you've gotta live what you're doing right now. So, say in one year, I'm gonna have done, you know, I think she said website design or, or something I that she's remember. doing. I yeah, so whatever it is, I will have done three projects for pay, or I will have a website, or I will have, you know, whatever set up, but man, like, keep those goals i don't want to say keep them small because in the long run you want them to be big yeah you can write all those down have fun with that yeah but in the short run the next year when your son is or your kid is almost two that's where where do you want to be at that point and what do you think is really realistic i think that's yeah. probably yeah and and is it possible i mean it may be a little bit much but is it possible to link up your um goal setting blog post oh. Up here? I'll just post it. I don't know if I can actually link it on the YouTube I think thing. you can. I can't because it's a, not a, our website. But yeah, oh, really? You, okay. Yeah. But you guys can check it out. It's up here. And, and it's, really, it's really exhaustive and it's really detailed. Yeah. And, and for some people, they're like, whoa, that's too much work. Right. But I'm telling you, this girl gets a lot more done than like 90% of the population. So if you want to get stuff done, like you're busy, yeah. right? Like we've got T3. We've got... TGD workshops, we've got Los Angeles TGD, we've got NOLA TGD, you're writing a book, we're writing another book, we're doing Q&A Saturday. And trying to live a life too, I mean, to and, be honest, like, right? there's also that too, like trying to live. But I'm just talking about projects, yeah, no, right? Know, like, so, so projects, and then there's like friends, family, personal you know, life. personal, yeah. like enjoying a little bit, getting your nails done, like having some fun, taking your dogs to the park, yeah. all that stuff. All I'm saying is that like, we're extremely busy 
and we still find ways to be able to make sure we yeah. move forward. And like today, so, like I said, today I'm working on the, I was working on my book and, I, and all I wanted to do was like block out everything mm -hmm. and like, I'm just, just gonna dive up. in. But the reality is, is that I won't get the rest of my stuff done yeah. that I need to do today. So I take your advice and I chunk it down into a small piece and I do that work and guess what you feel like? You feel awesome. Even if it's 15 minutes, you're like, I did what I said I was going to do. Yeah. And that's how self-esteem yep. and, and that's how that momentum of like belief, self-trust, yep. you know what I mean? Like think about it this way. You write stuff down and you know what typically happens with most people? They never do it. do it. But you write stuff down and like today was a great crossing mm -hmm. off list. Today I had so many things listed and I was like, boom, yeah. boom. And there's nothing that feels better or makes you feel, makes you feel more trusting in that you will accomplish what you want than like writing out goals for the day or for the week and start crossing them off and working them through them. Work yeah. Through, yeah. So that's what we suggest. You got a tough road, yeah. but man, like there's people that have had things way harder way than worse. that. So like you want it, go nail it down, I think find you're your way. Be great. Just just keep I know a lot of people say big dream big, do this big stuff, but man, you've already dreamed big. You've had kids, you've got a, a nice like life, you've got a job, you've got, those are big dreams realized. Yeah. So good for you. And now this is another big dream that you want. So start working on it slowly and hopefully in a year things will change and then another year. If you want it bad enough, you should want it in 10 years. Yeah. So Yeah, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Have fun with it. Yeah, yeah have fun <laughs> building it. 15 minutes should be so fun. Rather than being stressed out. Mm -hmm. Cool. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, Amanda. Hope, hope that helps. Yeah, let us know. Question number three. We've got Robin. Robin says, hey guys, I have hey, two Robin. questions or scenarios. Yes. I'll address one this week and one next week. Well, very nice of you. I recently had a dog dropped off to me after her owners left for vacation and wrecked the house. Mm -hmm. So she wrecked the house. Not, um, not the owners. Not the owners. The pet sitter reported to the owners that Sadie chewed two four foot holes in the sheetrock walls, destroyed her crate and several beds. Sounds like classic separation anxiety. She proceeded to do the same at my home, minus wall damage, within 30 minutes of arrival. She was not e-collar trained, but I put it on anyway and gave her fairly decent corrections after destroying my crate. Mm -hmm. I watched her on video remotely and corrected her accordingly. Nice. During the course of the week, I retrained her to the crate and she respected it. Mm -hmm. By the week's end, she had a calmer state of mind. After she was picked up and returned home, her owner emailed to say she did more damage after they left for dinner. Mm -hmm. Their suggestion was doggy Prozac. Yeah. I'm deeply disappointed after discussing with them why she suffers from separation anxiety. How do you guys explain to people what separation anxiety is and how to correct it in terms they understand? Thanks as always. Love you guys. Robin. Thanks, Robin. Um, I'd love for you to jump in and explain this because oh. you probably deal with a ton of like having to actually like, of course I explain it too in like blogs and things, but like if you're talking to a client who's got separation anxiety. Yeah, we just you, have sent one home. Yeah, we did indeed. <laughs> so so share with some folks a little bit about like yeah. what, what kind of information you share with them as far as like what creates it, what builds it, and what can they do to, well, to turn it around. There's a couple of things. I mean, I think you definitely, I'm sure you did it, Robin. You talked about relationship, just like we talked about at question number one. Mm -hmm. you talked about relationship and how, like, affection, letting the dog get away with small little things while you are there. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of, like, dogs that have separation anxiety, what I say is, you need to deal with their anxiety when you are with them because the separation anxiety is just anxiety. So deal with the anxiety all over. So when you're present with them, handle their anxiety. Mm. So more rules, more structure, all that stuff. You explain to them like the psychology behind this, why the separation anxiety is there, why their soft relationship or affection levels and things like that can really affect the dog. Mm -hmm. So you get into all of that. But then on the just the practical note, I set all the owners up for like a big giant like bad stuff coming down that way. Like I was just we were Henri and I Henri just walked in. Henri and I were just talking to the last client <laughs> and we're literally like setting them up, okay, so when he goes crazy in the crate, like tomorrow or tonight, like you know, all these things yeah. and really setting them up for like low expectations for when yeah. they get home. Yep. Because 
especially separation anxiety, the dogs are gonna try it when they get home. Mm -hmm. That's like the one for me that I see a lot that dogs will try, they'll go home and push it. So I just feel like... I hate when like I'm writing down a really like insightful thing and then like you say it right as I'm oh, writing it. Oh, awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they're just, they, they just have that, that just seems to be the MO is that typically they give it one more go. So I give them all sorts of like, you're gonna do the camera to watch them. You need to make sure they know that the same rules apply here as they do at home. They're definitely gonna try it because it's still gonna stick there and you guys haven't had enough time. So you set those expectations, you set that bar real low. They go home, they have an episode. Instead of writing you and being like, oh, we tried you and now the only thing left is Prozac. Instead, they write you and they're like, ha ha. It happened just like, just you like said we thought. It would. Yep. Okay, so these are the things I did. What do you suggest for today? All this stuff. Um, one thing I definitely, definitely recommend is that they ha that they do to do test runs of leaving. So putting the dog in the crate with the e collar on. They have like a FaceTime, like their iPad on FaceTime or some baby cam or something mm -hmm. where they can watch the dog. They leave, pretend they do all the motions like they're leaving, have the e-collar ready, and as soon as you get that first like paw on the crate or that first cycle that goes into that escalation cycle, they correct. So the dog learns like, oh crap, the same stuff, okay. And then as the days go on, the owner's practicing all the other stuff, hopefully, while they are there, and the dog starts to fall into a more easy pattern with them. Yeah, you know? yeah. How many frozen Kongs do you recommend in a crate? <laughs> well, it's two a day. <laughs> two a day. Per hour. Per hour, yeah. So it's, it's a lot of Kongs, <laughs> yeah. right? And like the keeping them frozen, like they, you need, like, you might need, need an extra freezer Gotta just to keep those babies going. Gotta okay, so real quick. So on top of that, so mental and physical space, guys, mm. like Laura, I know is hitting on this, but if you want the whole reason dogs get separation anxiety is because they're allowed to do this way yeah. too much on your lap being touched being close following you yep. I need this I need this Laura said the drug that is you mm -hmm. that's what this creates I need this without this I'm terrified I'm uncomfortable I'm scared I'm freaked out so you have to pattern through training getting the dog accustomed to being at a distance yeah. emotionally and physically from the owner or owners what whoever might be the trigger to where the dog is like I can handle this yeah. I can I can I can deal with this new way so you don't get like Laura said excuse me this big contrast mm -hmm. when like your dog has been like yeah. your baby and then all of a sudden you head out to work for eight hours and your dog's like ah what do I do this is so like this is unnerving I've never had to deal with this yeah. and they panic and they freak out because they're so used to having you around that they just lose their marbles yeah. so that's really important treat your freaking dog like a dog like I mean it doesn't get any more simple than that like treat your dog like a dog and watch so much of this crap just go away mm -hmm. it's like you know I, I've, I've I've kind of like vacillated back and forth talking about like you can treat your dog like kids as long as you treat them like kids and not babies right like so I want to make sure that's really crystal clear with people like good kids have structure rules accountability consequences babies don't so make sure that you treat your dog and if you're gonna treat him like a kid then make sure you treat him like a good kid but primarily treat your dog like a dog and watch all this stuff go away like farmers Farmers don't have separation anxiety, right? Why is, e either. why is that? <laughs> it's because they're not doing any of the stuff that creates it because yeah. they don't have the emotional voids that the dogs fulfill, mm -hmm. that like the dogs live in their home dogs and we dogs. and we and we right and we put all of this emotionality on them to f to fill these voids in ourselves and the dogs are unsuspecting victims in it and next thing you know they're freaking out and losing their marbles because now that like incredible closeness and, and whatever you know emotional connection is now gone yeah. so treat them like dogs and if you're not going to treat them like dogs treat them like kids but badass kids okay so make that distinction no babies and then remember you're going to have to repattern all these old habits all these old choices like laura said and at your own home boys are going to be harder because all the associations are there this is where i do this mm -hmm. this is how i feel in your presence this is how i feel in my home's presence and you're going to have to work your butt off and, to get a, your dog to feel different. Yeah, in a perfect world, like they wouldn't have to, separation anxiety dogs 
wouldn't have to be left for 30 days and the owners would just kick their butt with obedience for 30 days and then be like, okay, we'll put you in a crate, you know, yeah. but yeah, unfortunately yeah, yeah. it's something that needs to happen like right away. Yeah. So that's why I say there's always going to be a relapse. You set them up like team us. We got this separation. Anxiety is hard. He's going to go home. He's going to try you, but be prepared for it. And these are the things that we're going to do to, to make it better. Yeah. Did we cover that? Okay. We I did. Think, I think we did. Good. Thanks. Separation anxiety is tough. Hang in there. Yeah. Let Hang us in know. there. No babying. Well, it's not for her, <laughs> the client. I know, sure? I know. But she's asking, like, the question is, how do you explain it to yeah, clients? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I, ex no babying. Yeah, I mean, but setting them up for failure in a good way is really makes it easier on you as a trainer to not get that, like, that email that's just like, oh, fine. Don't. Yeah, it's not on you. I mean, if you do the work and you give the clients a good go home protocol, then it's on the clients to do that work and follow cool. through and they have to be prepared. Like the, one of the things I said, I know we're way over, but one of the client, one of the things I've said to the clients today as they were working with their beagle, who's like out of its tree was like, I looked at both of them and I was like, just remember guys, it's gonna be a process. Mm -hmm. This is not going to go smooth. He's going to go home and he's going to give you a really hard time and you got to be prepared mm -hmm. for that. And if you get frustrated, annoyed, or throw in the towel, you've wasted all this money. Yeah. All you need to do is fight the good fight and fight it long enough until where you get your dog into a better space. Cool. So, all anyways. right, Robin, let us know. That's it. Okay, question number four comes yeah. from Stacy. Yep. Stacy says, I, hi guys, I have a bratty, fear aggressive, one and a half year old GSD Gus. <gasps> We're working with the e-collar and starting to see improvements, but have a ways to go. Yeah. My question is about behavior in the backyard. Uh -huh. When I put Gus on his long line to potty in the morning, he aggressively charges into the yard the moment I release him. Gus. He'll run to the edge of the property tail sh with his tail straight up and hackles, raised, looking for trouble. It's always the side with the neighbor Gus inexplicably hates. Of course, nobody's actually out there. I always check first, but I'm pretty sure he's looking for the neighbor bunnies, neighbor bunnies or anyone else to challenge or for being near the yard. What are your recommendations? Technically, this isn't charging a person, but it has a looking for trouble vibe. Should yeah. I just e collar correct when he charges, or do I need to heal position and walk about, go potty instead of letting him out on the long lead away from me? Thanks for any advice. Stacy, Stacy, Stacy. I love this question. Yeah, it's a great one. We've been getting this one a lot, or variations of this one a lot. And so the reason I like it is because it really creates the, distinct, the, dis, the, the distinction between management and correcting and having your dog do his best work, right? Yeah. So yes, you could go out there and you could e-collar heal your dog out there and be like, it's potty time, don't monkey around, mom's watching you and I've got my eyeballs on you and we're gonna like be this very like structured like walk or, which is like a huge giant pain in the ass, or you could let your dog out, right? He's on the e-collar, he runs up to go be a jackass at the fence, and you roll up on your e-collar, and you press and correct, and you might even correct for a couple seconds and let your dog know, knock that silliness no off at that, cr at, at that fence, yep. and watch what your dog does. Now, if you underwhelm him, and say he corrects at 10, and you're like, well, I'm gonna go to 20, he might just light up and get worse. So yeah. the, the trick is really to shoot for a level that your dog goes, whoa, mm. I don't want anything to do with that. That fence fighting stuff, like I always say, it feels like driving fast, jumping out of an airplane. Yeah, he's I mean, totally it's stressed. I mean, yeah, he, if he's dog, but he's also excited. Yeah, Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like you imagine but, a shepherd out there, like rah, 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 rah. It's helpful to think about the side that is stressed. It's easier to correct with that stuff too. For, at least for me, I know with people. So if you're like doing e-collar training, he knows what the e-collar means. You let that long line go as soon as those feet start to press into the earth so he can bound off to like go charge at the neighbor, which like you said, is exactly what he's doing. He's not actually like lunging or charging at a person, but he's looking for trouble. You correct that state of mind. You're correcting that guy who's saying like, I'm looking for trouble, right? So we're not correcting him for like, jumping out and like looking at the, you know, running around and like looking at stuff, whatever, we're correcting for looking for trouble. So your, your instincts I think are right on. Mm -hmm. I think you're going to do great with this. Yeah. He wants to tear that place apart. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, we'll fill you in on that some, some other day, someday. So 
Check it out. So there's a couple different approaches. So like Laura said, you can correct straight away as your dog makes the motion. A lot of times I like to allow the dog to go all the way up to the fence, mm -hmm. which can fly in the face of like catching like an escalation sequence mm -hmm. early, mm -hmm. right? But there's a reason for that. And the reason is like, for me, like, I know you can get a lot of value in a lot of different contexts, a lot of different ways, a lot of different approaches. But for me, I want a dog to go, that fence is hotter than Hades mm. and I don't want anything to do with it. And when that, dog's, when that dog's behind it, right. I want to stay the heck away from right, it. Right. So my whole goal is that you don't have to go out and e-call or heal your dog. You don't have to so watch your dog. It's a fence and it's a person. It's not, the, it's not the neighbor dog. I don't think there's a fence. I think there's a property line, which is why she has the long line on him. GSD is fence fighting. But you're looking at your notes. My notes, notes. My notes come from her notes. Let us know, Stacey. I think she said there's a long line. Uh, read, it, read it to me real he quick. He will run to the edge of the property, tail straight up and hackles looking for trouble. <gasps> Junior. Junior. Junior's um, got to go potty. So Laura has been letting me know that it could be uh, also a human being or a dog issue. The reality is you've got an e-collar trained dog. Let's make going to the fence, let's make being crappy with other dogs, let's make being crappy with human beings something that is crappy for your dog. Let's make that something not fun, not pleasant. Let's not try and recall him away. Let's not try and e-call or heal him. Heal him. Let's find a level that when your dog gets close to that situation that he goes, holy mackerel, I don't like that. And then give him, and then give him a minute or two and see how he responds. This is always kind of the magic component of this. Like people will correct and then call away, but they haven't figured out there. They haven't found out like, where's the dog at now with, with, right. with, the, with the situation. Right, right. I want to correct and then I want to watch. And I just want to sit there quietly and watch and go, okay, cool. There's that dog. There's that person. How do you feel about it? Mm -hmm. And if your dog inhibits his choice and makes a better choice, awesome. Then if you want to recall him away and put him inside, that's great. But what I don't want you to do is I don't want you to manage and like correct and like pull him away or just keep pulling him away or just keep e-call or healing him. Correct, create a consequence, create an inhibition that your dog cares about so he does his best work and so you can just trust that he's doing great stuff. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully yep. that helps. You'll, you'll rock it. I think your instincts are right on. Yeah, it's, I, I, this is actually a very simple protocol. Yeah, yeah. This is an easy one to fix. Yeah, you're going to do great. Yeah. All right, let us know. Question number five this comes, comes from, from Instagram. IG. Amanda Cooper EH says, My nine month old is reactive on leash towards dogs and now other people approaching. Mm -hmm. I've been working on positive distractions with high value treats, mm -hmm. but on today's walk, she reacted to people. What mm -hmm. did I do? Am I allowed to answer this? Of course. Okay. Amanda, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> no. So Amanda, like I just, I like channeled my inner Jeff Gelman there for a second. <laughs> so, um, You've got a nine month old reactive dog on walks mm -hmm. and you're using treats to try and get your dog into a better space. Which is um, common if you like look that up on the internet, people will say that. To right, that. right. I, I might yell again. Sorry, oh. just, just brace Don't yourself. Yell. Don't yell. I'll, I'll try and contain myself. Right. But the reality is, is what they're not telling you is that using treats, because I know a certain someone sitting next to me who tried to use treats to get her dog to stop being reactive. I don't think she had a very successful run of it. Um, that was a, five years ago. Oh, but now your treat training would have been better and he would have been like snapping to it. No, I'm saying like, <laughs> soon my fingers turned into treats for him. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. So what I really want to say, I'm, I'm, I'm hard timing you a little bit and having a little bit of fun here. But what I really want to say is that if you're dealing with a reactive dog, if you're trying to use pure positive, reward only, force free, just treat training, I'm telling you, 99, you, you have a 99% chance of failure, mm. <laughs> right? And I don't mean that to be crappy because I know that there's people out there doing food work and training and, 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 and reward based training with like the right dogs, like 
cupcake dogs, yep. dogs that are so easy that they can get away with that. But any dog with any kind of real baggage, any kind of real issues, any kind of real reactivity, and I don't mean reactivity like they're looking at a dog, I mean like they're barking, they're lunging, they're getting frenzied, they're getting freaked out. There's nothing, hear me, this is hear me roar. This is the simplest, most easy concept to get. When a dog's state of mind is up here because of reactivity, food is down here. There is no way to make this. You can be, you know, a, a filet mignon and you could like not feed your dog for three days, but if he really likes to be reactive around dogs, this ain't gonna mean nothing, right? Oh. And your whole goal is to get this to where this behavior, the reactivity comes down, but that's not what you're gonna get. And that's the part they don't tell you about food. And what they will tell you is that you're doing it wrong. You haven't done it for long enough. You haven't kept your dog under threshold. You need to be 48 miles away from the closest dog that's like barking or reacting or breathing or farting or anything, something like that. And it's, it's, it's a blame the owner kind of protocol rather than it is like, Hold the, hold the trainer accountable for getting good results. Yeah. And what I'm telling you is that you're more than welcome to try it and see what you, see what you get, but what I think you're gonna find is more continued frustration. Mm -hmm. You're gonna find that your dog is struggling. You're gonna find that your dog is actually feeling rewarded for being a jackass, right? Like, I know that you felt like Polar Bear was feeling like, yeah, oh, he, cool, I look at a dog a and then like... lunges and you give them a treat. That's literally how you teach behaviors in puppies. You, they do something and you give them a treat. And it's so hard, because at first, the way they, they kind of pose it, like you're creating positive associations, human, food. Good. Like to me, I, when I heard, first heard that, I was like, that is genius. Of course, that makes perfect sense. And then as I was That's doing it. That's why it's the it, best marketing it, plan it really in the is. world, yeah. And then as I was doing it, I was seeing like, I'm actually giving a treat for being a jerk. Like I'm not giving a treat to create associations, just getting worse. And there, of course, guys, there are of course dogs out there that do great mm -hmm. with treats and create yeah. like a little of distraction on the walk and food and stuff like that. You are awesome. And this question is not for you. This is for the other 90% of the people that we talk to, which is like people that have tried this and it's really created, caused their dog to get worse. Yeah. So, Miss Amanda Cooper, you need to, if you wanna try something different, if you're, if you're looking to try something different, what I would suggest is getting a prong collar. Being very diplomatic, I love this. What? It's just diplomatic, I well, love it. I mean, clearly, like, she, I don't think she's like a huge fan or like someone who's no, like... No, 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 I just love how you're approaching it. Oh. It's very nice. Thank you. You just have skills. <laughs> Amanda? You're so annoyed. Try a prong collar. No, I just, I'm, <laughs> try, I'm, not, I'm trying to help her. Get a prong collar, put it on your dog. We have a YouTube channel. Bing! right up mm -hmm, here mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. got some videos on there free how-to training videos yep how to size and fit the prong collar i mean if wow. you want to go full out with an e-collar you can but i would suggest just a prong to start prong collar changed my life long before i used an e-collar um get that on the dog yep. nice fit high up on the neck carabiner to the to the collar you'll see that in the videos yep and then you walk the dog you teach them what the pressure means to heal nicely next to you they look over at a dog or look at a person correct with that prong collar and you start to see much better stuff now the thing we don't want you doing is just put the prong and let him drag you around and it's super loose and oh my gosh it's not working he's just pulling on it and hurting himself no dog should be pulling on a prong collar. That's the point of it. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, they should be next to you in a heel, correcting for little things like moving out of the heel or correcting for looking at dogs or looking at people in an untoward fashion. Start there and then come see us again if you want more. Yeah, our prong collar, <laughs> um, the walk video yeah. is super easy. Yeah. Like it really shows how to how to how to create this 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 structured walk and how to get a dog out of a stressed nervous anxious place where yeah. they're not looking for information from you to where they are looking for information from you and they're in a more comfy relaxed well behaved space yep. so i'm just going to close this out i know i yelled at you at the very beginning and you know i don't mean it cuz i love you but what i what i if 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 you were my friend i would like put my arm around you and i would say like please, we need to try something different yeah, because I think else. this is really going to not 
take good care of you or mm -hmm. your dog. And the problem is, is that this food stuff has so much traction and so much marketing power behind it yeah. that everybody gives it a shot and they spend a ton of money, a ton of time, get really frustrated. They may even like make their dogs much worse. And the reality is like Laura said, go get a $30 prong collar, watch a couple of our free videos, watch a couple of Jeff's free yeah. videos, teach your dog the structured walk, watch some of our um, Q and A's, and then read some of my some of my vlogs, some of my blogs, mm -hmm. and and get a real like psychological perspective on it. And then you'll be able to go out there and like you don't need this silliness. Go out there and like teach your dog how to walk and like own the walk. This is how you walk. Yeah. Walk with me. Don't look at that dog that way. Pop if they do, and your dog's like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Your dog doesn't get scared, freak out, nervous, melt, you know, like lose your relationship. Your dog's like, oh, I'm not allowed to do that. Cool, and now I'll do something else. Yep. So so that is what I would suggest for you and I just the reason I get such a strong reaction is because it's really frustrating to hear people struggle with stuff Sucks. that I, yeah I think I think both of us are pretty visceral to that about hearing that people are like out there I can just picture you out there shoveling treats and not getting results and it pisses me off so no need. Amanda go kill it yeah Let's go kill it, it. prong call 30 bucks yeah. change your life right Three videos you got this right okay guys. okay so it's teach the giveaway time um I got an email well today look at you fact, from a q and -er who we answered her question Jeanette on yeah. the hundredth episode oh Jeanette I don't remember less concerned okay cool so she says hi Sean and Laura Thanks for answering my question on the 100th episode. I'm You're very to remember welcome. It. I'm less concerned about Louie's excitability at the vet, and I've really been focusing on his, oh yeah, the one that she was just more focusing on the vet stuff. And I've really been focusing on his reactivity and behavior in everyday situations. He's mm -hmm. coming along nicely. Great, Jeanette, awesome. Um, she said, in the 100th episode, you mentioned free DVD giveaways for rescues. I'm not sure if you're still doing that, but I wanted to tell you about a rescue I adopted Louie from. Mm -hmm. It's called Get a Bull, Inc., and it's sol solely run by two ladies who work full-time jobs and devote the rest of the time to their rescue. Get a Bull is predominantly a rescue of pit bull dogs and is 100% foster-based as they don't have a facility. The ladies at Get a Bull are very open-minded rega regarding prong and e-collar training and provide whatever assistance is possible for foster and adoptive families. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Getable is fully funded by donations. I'm sure they'd be ecstatic to receive one of your DVDs. She gave their mm. address. Be sure to check out Getable on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for your consideration. You guys are the best. Sincerely, Jeanette. Bam. So awesome. done and done. That prong collar DVD is going to be going out to them. Mm -hmm. Care of you or if you want to just let them know, I'm actually going to send the receipt to you so you can send it on to them because it's got the PDF and all that stuff in there. Yeah. Um, but Jeanette, that's awesome. I'm so proud of you for doing your work with, with mm. Louie. And then just like hearing about a rescue that's open up to other tools and stuff, that just makes my heart sing. It makes me want to go out there and talk to them and yeah, you know, that's like something I definitely want to do more of those seminars. Yeah. I mean, stuff. you just did that workshop and that was like a big success. <laughs> Super and, fun. and I was just thinking the other day, like we have got to come up with some kind of like, I would love us to sit down and work out some kind of a rescue shelter foster video, oh like gosh. do's and don'ts, like very simple do protocols. DVD. That's just all that, like basically like simple prong stuff and that like we could do our own DVD and just give it out. Like not, not involve Liz and make her like cry. <laughs> Poor Liz. <laughs> so Jeanette. Liz did her other DVDs and every time we call, we're like, we want to do another DVD. She's like, ah, no. <laughs> like, I'm done with you. So now. maybe do our own? Yeah. That I mean, could be great. I would, just, I would just love to help out. So. Simple processes, simple processes that can actually change dogs in profound ways yeah. with simple stuff. Yeah. Like all the stuff you were showing at that, at that workshop. Simple stuff. Yeah. People are excited. Yeah. Then I have two more giveaways. Okay. Trick or treat. Trick or treat indeed. So, all, the, all the way from NOLA. We had a really sweet client in New Orleans who moved to educator collars, of mm -hmm. course. Um, and she donated these to us. God, their packaging's real nice. Yeah. That's really IQ's, nice yeah. packaging. Yeah. These are dog tra IQ. This is the dog tra IQ, single dog. Pretty much freaking brand new. Like, 
very brand new. Yeah. Like the thing this, still this shiny. used to be this used to be all we used. Yeah, that's yeah. all we used, and it's a great collar. So I'd say it's kind of like um, akin to the mini educator as far as like levels. Probably exactly right? like a mini educator. It doesn't have a few of the bells and whistles. It doesn't have an LED. Lights. It doesn't have an LED readout. Yeah. But uh, honestly, like one of the cool things that this does have, the way it fits in your hand, like it's always been my favorite. It's it's, it's always been my what favorite favorite transmitter. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. So. I, the one thing I can't say is that I can't vouch for like with the battery life on these things. Like this is we're not this is we're not going to be a shop. So if the batteries go out, yeah, don't you send it back to us. Send it back. Send it, to, send it to dog truck. You have to take care of it yourself. But chances are, because she didn't use it very much. This is a brand new one. I'm pretty sure this one's good. But but just want to put that out there that we're we're not totally sure. It definitely works. <laughs> Because <laughs> this is a good story, guys. I didn't realize. Tell them why how, it doesn't work or why it does work. I didn't realize how high it was. It was like at 90, which is pretty high. And I was just holding it and I was talking to my mom on the phone. I didn't think it worked because I was like, I'm pretty sure super these distracted. You're like, sorry with mom. Ba -ba 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 -ba. I just pressed and held it continuous at 90, and my like, I was like, whoa, okay, that's really intense. But it was just more like, <laughs> I didn't expect it to work, so yeah. I wasn't prepared for anything, yeah. and it worked. Shocked your system. So yeah, it basically like made my hand go like that sort of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. 90 is real high. So yeah. anyway, 90 is real high. <laughs> um, is there any way? Is there any way just for like, I know people would freaking love this. I don't think they've ever seen it. Your video with oh the bark collar. I Do don't know where that is. I'd have to dig it you'd out. You'd have to dig it out. You'd have to it's pull it up on Facebook. The, it's probably, is it on the Facebook? I know you posted it, I think. There's a video we have where <laughs> Laura demonstrates the new um, e-collar technology's bark collar yeah. and, and, and is holding it and barking and terrified. <laughs> And, and she's, I'm like, she's like, she's like, and then it's like, roof, ah! <laughs> because it like stops and like gives you a tone. It's like you're prepared, you're too prepared. For right, it. right, so right. So you're all tense. And it wasn't but, even that high, no, but you just scared not, the crap out of you. It didn't even like feel bad. It yeah. was just like, you did it Whoa. twice, I think, because yeah, you were like, well, oh, let me try it again. Like, oh, but it's one of the greatest videos of all time. I, I'd love I'm to sure see if we can, it. if we can dig that out. But anyway, so we are doing a giveaway with this sucker. Yep. Um, because uh, we're not using like IQs anymore, but man, they're great callers and so nice of Kyle. And, and we just want we just want you guys, yeah. somebody who's in need of an e-collar, somebody who can't afford it, like we'd really like to pass this on. So you email this email. If it doesn't go to this email, it won't go, get to me. So I promise you this email, not just an email that we've used before, this one right here. And I want to hear a little story about what you're doing and why you would need this. Not just like, hey, I'm putting my name in the ring for an e-collar, but like a yeah. story why you would need it and what you would use it for and what your journey has been and all that stuff. And then we'll get together and we'll talk about it. Yeah. And I'll probably just like, you know, maybe you'll pay for shipping or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, something like that. It can't like be. It can't be very bucks. much. No. Like for a, a new e collar, new or, e -collar, or close to a new e collar, just you'll pay postage. Th that's a that's we call that a screaming, screaming deal in the deal. industry. Yeah. So, and that, then and then we have this is actually a two dog system. Oh wow! It's a two dog IQ system. It's actually wow, marked. really? Mm -hmm. I don't even know if I've like set eyes on one of these. It's pretty cool. They have it like switches. You can switch oh, it yeah, back yeah, and yeah. forth. So you switch it to IQ plus. Wow. Um, when, uh, I, um, this one has been used more, so this one might need like battery reduce, but gosh, they look new. May, yeah, I'm telling you. And the straps have been cut on this one for small dogs, so you would might have to get new straps if you got this one. But this is a dual dog system. We've Boy, got, that's a that's an expensive, nice system. Our client is a bomb, like the bomb. Have you so, put this one on you? Can we put this one on you yeah, and find out if it works? I'm pregnant. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> this one does not come with a fancy box, but that's a really, really nice, expensive new collar. I didn't even so, know we had a double dog collar. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Now you want to keep it? So I'm like, hey. 
<laughs> so, yeah. So write, write an email, same email up here. Tell me your little story. And then we're gonna get together and decide. We really, you don't, it doesn't need to be like a sob story, but I wanna hear like, you know, maybe We'd what like you're doing. We like sob stories though. If you need the collar, let us know. Yeah. And we wanna know exactly why. And then we'll do giveaways like whenever I get that email, so. Yeah, cool guys. Cool. So jump in. If you if you need one of those, please grab, please please email us, yep. and uh, we we we'd love to get those out to somebody in yeah. need. So awesome callers, and they should not go to waste here. Yes. So cool. All right, guys, we did this it. This is another Four marathon. Three. Another marathon. You're gonna have a lot of editing ahead of you. A lot of monkey it's business not be went that down. Bad. It's no. Not be that bad. Okay, guys, love you. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Numbers keep going up. We're hitting the 800s, moving Ooh. into the thousands. Things are slowly moving along. Rockin'. Thanks for hanging with us. Yeah. 100 three episodes even though I did this yeah. I, I, I don't know what that meant but bye guys bye we love you Mm-hmm.